Merry Christmas, Cheng. Merry Christmas. Today, <laughs> uh, today holiday. What you do? Uh, I work. <laughs> <laughs> Training. Same everyone, yeah. Good. No, no days off, even Christmas, no matter what. We train. So we're gonna do a challenge, okay? Who do the de 10 fastest uh, kicks, okay? It's gonna be me versus Luai, and Chang is gonna be the pad holder. Hamesh, five seconds. Let's go, let's go. He's gonna, I think he's gonna win. He's fast. That was six seconds. I'm faster. Winner. <laughs> Thank you, Chang. Thank you. He says I look good in Christmas uh, outfit. Not for me. I'm pretty strict with my diet right now. I have to be. Um, less than two months out. But I'm really hoping that I'm gonna find something just like this. <laughs> wow. That is really calling my name. New York stick. Oh, and the blueberries. Sometimes it can be very confusing and hard to just order a simple meal because of the lack of uh, communication, even though I have like, you know, Google Translate. I don't know, for some reason, very hard for them to, to understand what I want. Um, but, you know, in this time, I was able to convey my message with rice, egg, vegetables, post-training. Communicating for me with the ties as a native English speaker, I have a pretty good grammar, and my my, my accent is also pretty <laughs> American. Um, but when I come and I, I speak and I try to communicate with the ties, it changes completely. What do I mean? If I try and speak the way I'm speaking right now with them, they won't understand what I'm trying to say. They won't understand a word, even if they do speak a little bit of English because they have certain intonations, they have uh, certain ways of saying the words, and they, also, they don't pronounce, for instance, R, right? If you say sorry, they don't, they don't pronounce, they actually, they substitute it with an L. So I would say so, soli, soli. So there's a certain intonation to it. If I were to come and say I'm sorry, they, they want to know what I'm saying. So it's changing, it's adapting myself to that, and the grammar also, it's completely off. Uh, it's, we, we call it broken English, basically. We speak Thai English, we speak broken English in order for them to understand. So that way I think I kind of step into their, their culture and coming into their, their, stepping into their shoes to really engage with them and respect them. Um, I don't look down at them, they don't look down at me, I hope. And it's always coming and, you know, putting your hands together and saying so. Uh, thank you. What else? They're very smiley people. So I also, it, it, it's contagious. So I just smile all the time. I smile to them, they smile back to me. And it shows some sort of friendship. Even though you don't know the person, you know, I, I go by a certain, um, the, um, the gate to the gym every single morning and I just say good morning to the, the guard and I, I smile or without even saying good morning, just smiling. And it, it makes this, this communication very friendly. And again, with all that, sometimes it can be very hard to communicate with them and to convey a certain message due to the lack of the, the language barrier and certain ways that you would say something in English. It doesn't, even if you do Google Translate, it doesn't convey the message and that translation it doesn't translate correctly. So, you know, if I wanted to order a simple meal like, you know, rice, egg, vegetable, it's breaking it down to the pieces of it in order to just order that simple meal. 
sometimes even that can get screwed up. You just have to go with the flow. So I just finished my meal and I'm gonna ask them how much it is and I'm gonna pay for it. Sorry? Uh, it's all right. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. What? See, it's even that simple, that simple thank you of just saying a few words in Thai that they just like so appreciate it. Like she speaks Thai, not fully, but they they really respect that when you could say a little bit of, of thank you words. Not only am I Jewish, I also grew up religious. I grew up in a religious environment, and under those circumstances. There were some things that I was allowed to do, wasn't allowed to do, and keeping kosher was one of them. As the years went on, and keeping Shabbat, as the years went on, my lifestyle kind of changed, and I'm, a less, I'm less observant, but I, I really try to keep kosher as far as meat. Like, I won't eat meat outside if it's not kosher. I'll definitely eat kosher fish, and sometimes it could be very challenging. Uh, outside, finding or communicating, you know, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want it to be um, served seafood or not to put like any chicken in, in the food. Sorry, there's just like, a lot of <laughs> mosquitoes here. So it could be challenging, but I always find my way. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's not too hard, like vegetables, eggs is fine. So yeah, now I'm gonna go have some dinner now, probably fish, rice, vegetables simple.